I want you guys to take only 30 seconds and listen to this clip and let me know the person Musalem Davadi is actually referring to in the clip. Bada ya uchaguzi. Bada ya uchaguzi. Shida ziko. Tuweke mambo ya election nyuma kidogo. Kwa sababu hata tukiendelea na blame game hatutasaidia sasa. Mamlaka yamepewa na wananchi kwa wale wako kwa wadhifa mbalimbali. So now we must put behind us the blame game because if we engage in the blame game sooner or later the currency of blame game will end. And it might end faster than we imagine. So we must now move away from the blame game to service delivery and support for the people of Kenya from wherever we sit. Here is your message ambayo mimi nataka nisisitize. <laughs> Who do you think Musalem Davadi was referring to in that particular clip? Personally, I believe that the person is Rigadiga Shagwa. But I could be wrong. You could be having someone else in mind. So let me know in the comment section the person you strongly believe Muslim Davadi was referring to. For me, let me just play for you the clip a bit so that I can bring you to speed why I strongly believe the person is Rigadiga Shagwa. Because in this video, I want us to look at the objectives which Musalia Mudavadi wanted to achieve by attacking Rigadi Gashagwa directly, which is historic. Listen in briefly. Who has been blaming everybody for the current situation in the country? Kenya, hapa njini Kenya. Na tungetaka kuambia hiyo watu ya bizani. Nyinyi muachana na William Ruto afanye kazi. Huu uchumi wa Kenya huko hapa leo nyinyi ndiyo mlileta mambo ya handshake na mambo ya BBI mkaharibu Kenya. Siku tumekuja kwa serikali tumekuta hakuna kitu. Pesa yetu yote ya Kenya 50 billion mlichukua mkaleka BBI, mkapeleka BBI. Mkachukua 200 billion mkapeleka project azimio ikazama pamoja na nyinyi. Kwa hivyo msitulete sisi Musituambie atavira Kenya natakiwa kukaa. Rigadi Gashagwa has been blaming Raila Odinga. He has been blaming Uhuru Kenyatta. Rigadi Gashagwa has been blaming BBI. Rigadi Gashagwa has been blaming Handshake for all the problems facing the country. In fact, the biggest problem William Ruto committed in the last election was to promise Kenyans heaven. While he knew so well that there was no way he was going to take Kenyans to heaven. But he made those promises. And because those promises cannot be met, Rigadi Gashagwa is now blaming Uhuru and Raila. And this is what Mudavadi is saying. Listen br briefly again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So basically he's telling Rigadi Gashagwa that the Kenyan people give them the mandate. And therefore, they should not be blaming any other person, but instead look for solutions. So I believe that Mudavadi was referring to Rigadi Gashagwa. Let him continue. So now we must put behind us the blame game. Because if we engage in the blame game, sooner or later, the currency of blame game will end. Good. He's reminding Rigadi Gashagwa that as much as they can blame everybody, that currency of blame game is soon coming to an end. Basically, Kenyans are getting tired with the blame game, which Rigadi Gashagwa is actually using currently as the main topic during his countrywide tours. So in this video, I want us to look at the coded message which Muslim Davadi was actually trying to send out to Rigadi Gashagwa. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, 
YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, the channel cannot be where it is. And I want to make a request, to, a special request to you guys. For this particular video, please just press that, that thumbs up button. And also don't forget to drop your comment in case you believe that Muslim Ravadi was referring to someone else. Now, let us get back to business. Now, having listened to that clip, I'm convinced 100% that Muslim Ravadi was attacking Rigadi Gashagwa directly. Why would Muslim Ravadi attack Rigadi Gashagwa directly? And what political objective would Muslim Ravadi achieve by attacking Rigadi Gashagwa directly? In my view, and since in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, everything in politics is normally designed to achieve a specific political objectives, I strongly believe that Muslim Ravadi wanted to achieve the following political objectives by attacking Rigadi Gashagwa, especially on blame games. Number one, Muslim Ravadi has actually read the mood of the country. That's not in doubt. The mood of the country currently is that Kenyans are tired with blame games. And that's why he was reminding Rigadi Gashagwa that they have been given mandate. So majority of Kenyans believe that William Ruto made promises to them. And that because he made promises to them, he just need to fulfill those promises. Remember, Rigadi Gashagwa was one of the people who was very clear in his mind that, for example, the cost of Unga was still high at that particular time. In fact, after the election, but when there was this petition, that it was still high because Raila Odinga had taken the case to the court and that had Raila Odinga not gone to the courts, the price of Unga would have lowered. So Kenyans expected them to lower it immediately. But now they are finding excuses that the economy is bad, everything is bad, and now they are blaming everybody. So Muslim Ravadi has read the minds of Kenyans who are really tired with this blame game because Kenyans are just telling uh, Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa that spare us all this drama. What we want from you guys is simple, just service delivery, just deliver to us the services. So luckily for Muslim Ravadi, he has actually read the mood of the country. And that's why he's taking it, talking, I mean, he's taking that particular direction to align himself with the thinking of majority of Kenyans. For Rigadi Gashagwa, he's still blaming everybody, blaming Raila, blaming Handshake, blaming BBI, blaming uh, Uhuru, blaming uh, Sijui, every other person other than their government. So Muslim Ravadi has read the mood of the country and the country is actually tired with the blame games. Number two, I also tend to think that the attacks by Gudavadi on Rigadi Gashagwa could actually be on the fight on who is the second in command. William Ruto, through exec an exec executive order, made it very clear that Rigadi Gashagwa is the second in command. Muslim Ravadi comes after him. But Muslim Ravadi still believes that politically he should be the second in command. And that's where the problem is. So he's trying to still compete here. Because politically, you know, there is, you remember when uh, Raila was the prime minister, Kalonzo was the vice president, there was that contest that legally the second in command was Kalonzo Musioka. Politically, the second in command was, was uh, Raila Odinga. That is the exact case. Muslim Ravadi believes that politically outside there, he should be projected either as the second in command or equal to Riga Diga Shagwa. <laughs> And because of that, he will, Muslim Ravadi will still continue using any available opportunity to continue attacking Rigadi Gashagwa. Any opportunity he will get, he will attack Rigadi Gashagwa. So that's number two. Number three, I also tend to think that Muslim Ravadi has not forgiven Rigadi Gashagwa because of the issue of the office. For those who follow the politics of this country very closely, when, when Kenya Kwanzaa government took over, and they were sworn in immediately. William Ruto promised to make Muslim Ravadi the Prime Cabinet Secretary in 14 months, according to their, to their agreement. But later on, news emerged in this country that William Ruto had agreed to allocate Muslim Ravadi his former office, Harambe House Annex, 
and that Rigathi Gachagua was actually going to be housed at the office of the president. Some two floors there. So that Musel Murevadi was going to have that big office. That did not take place. Because Rigathi Gachagua is a man you can't joke with. He told Mudavadi, no way. Later on, they looked for an office and Musel Mudavadi was dumped somewhere in railways. I'm sure up to this stage, Musel Mudavadi has not forgiven Rigathi Gachagua. So whatever we are witnessing is just an extension of that particular war between Rigathi Gachagua and Musel Mudavadi over the issue of the office. And lastly, I'm also reading post-2022 politics. I've always reminded you guys on this particular platform that in politics there are only two things which are constant. The first thing which is constant in politics is normally the interest. If interests of politicians are converging, they are sorted. The second thing which is also constant in politics is normally betrayal. So there's a possibility that Mudavadi, I mean there's a possibility that William Ruto and Rigadi Gashago might actually fall out. If they fall out, who will be the running mate in 2022? For example, who knew that Uhuru and Ruto would fall out? So Muslim Davadi is trying to position himself by aligning himself to majority of Kenyans, what they believe, by making Rigadi Gashago appear as someone who is uh, not right, not ready for... I mean, Muslim Davadi is basically branding himself as presidential. So that in case there's going to be a, an opportunity, William Ruto can easily pick him as his running mate. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye.